Fighting games are, at their heart, still a niche entertainment product, reliant on the good graces of a limited audience. Tekken 4 wasn't popular, and so Tekken 5 could be seen as a direct rebuttal of many of the steps it took. Tekken 4 was more realistic, so Tekken 5 is the most insane entry of the series thus far, with Jin Pachi, Devil Jin, animals, 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 and aliens? Juggle damage lowered? Well, juggle damage is back, and then some. Tekken 4 was controversial, the first game in the series which split the competitive community in half. Many Tekken Tag enthusiasts were driven away by its movement and feel, and so elected to stick with Tag. Tekken 5 went some way to bringing the two halves of the community back together. Old favorite playstyles like Mishima Wave Dash and Launching Electrics would compete with the Tekken 4 newcomers like Steve in a mix of walled and infinite arenas, and new characters were introduced with crazy new properties which were notably still less rule-breaking than characters like Jin, Marduk, or Steve, and more just kind of cheap. Tekken 5 would also be pretty much the last game to have any kind of significant arcade presence outside Japan and Korea, making it sort of a swan song for the Western arcade scene. Tekrol vulnerability was back. There's a popular misconception that the window was longer than in Tekken Tag, but it was still just one frame. The difference was that Tekken 5 moves have almost universally bigger hitboxes, and far more active frames than their tag counterparts, so timing around the one frame is just much easier. To this point, hitboxes were enlarged again, giving more of a beefy feel to the game. Backdash was increased in distance, albeit not to the crazy levels of Tech and Tag. Sidewalk was now double tap up or down, and sidestep was back. Neutral jumping was possible again. Hooray! Juggle pushback was decreased, and tech roll height was lowered for the easiest juggles yet. Wall tech was removed and characters would slump forward onto the ground into a face-first position. Wall damage scaling now existed, to make hitting the wall not mean instant death, which it basically would have done if Tekken 4 damage scaling was retained, and notably it still does sometimes mean instant death. This scaling was precluded from low wall hits, which still connected for 100% of their base damage. Come on. The crush system was introduced to small fanfare despite the fact that Tech Crouch and Tech Jump moves totally existed in previous games. What Tekken 5 actually did was distribute these properties more uniformly. For example, low jabs now high crushed, but could also be low crushed, giving the semblance of a new system. Generic left throws were reintroduced. Wall push became a Steve-only mechanic. Long range throws were introduced. These were easy to break, but covered a much longer distance. And finally, air throws were introduced. One of the more infamous characters in Tekken history, and for good reason. Tekken 4 Steve had ridiculous safety, but some weaknesses in whiff punishment and mix-ups. Tekken 5 Steve received a minor nerf in the first category, but inexplicable buffs almost everywhere else. Many top-tier fighting game characters rise to their status over time, but Tekken 5 Steve is one of the few who was hailed as the undisputed number one right from the get-go, and never even slightly budged from that spot, only becoming more powerful as more things were discovered. 
left-right left frames were slightly worse. But hey, no problem, now he could cancel into Flicker and Cyclone Punch, which couldn't be interrupted by jabs and counter-hit launches. His right uppercut remained one of the more puzzling additions, where it didn't just launch or normal hit, but had a guard break animation which made trying to pressure afterwards very tough. This was presumably done to cause his double right uppercut crouch launcher to be punishable, but just sort of ended up making him even more impossible to get in on. His quick hook led to free damage even on normal hit. His lows were buffed with knee blaster and foot stomp to right hook. And if he got to your back or side, you are either mostly dead or just plain dead. His while standing two launched crouching opponents. Skyscraper and Sonic Fang were minus 13, which was great for some characters, but virtually unpunishable for others like Raven. The evasion on his sways was also heavily buffed. His minor losses included that Flicker could now actually be punished on whiff. His quick hook no longer gave full relaunch combos on counter hit, and moves like Tempest combo lost their absurd plus frames. Right alongside her son, Tekken 5 Nina is one of the most oppressive characters in the franchise's history. Her uppercut to jab string was not only plus one on block, but her just frame spider knee, despite being minus 14, had outrageous pushback. So, pressing buttons or moving much after uppercut to jab was tremendously disincentivized. Blaze Stinger was both a tremendous distance closing move and one of the most ferocious Okizeme and juggle enders in Tekken history, as it locked the opponent into a near guaranteed stomp or got them reset into another combo, which again ended with another Blaze Stinger and probably ended the round. Siren's Kiss was actually a launcher on normal hit making it the game's most damaging 14-frame block punisher in open space. Divine Cannon was mostly safe on block as long as you did the down down back 3 version, and why wouldn't you? Her main problem was that her lows were somewhat mediocre, as her down back 3 wasn't yet the threat it would become later, and also she wasn't great at closing distance. <laughs> Gunryu was somewhat surprisingly a devastatingly powerful character in 5.0, and one who slid under the radar a bit at the start until Tarechichi and Bronson Tran popularized him. His thrusting uppercut was very safe on block and reasonably evasive, and his while standing 2 was only minus 9, making it basically unpunishable by 10 frame jab characters. His Okizeme was also disgustingly powerful, with his double hammer hitting grounded. In combos, it guaranteed a free ducking palm. Gunryu could therefore get half-life combos for his high crushing thunder palm or his double step in palm. He had good pokes with his jabs, freight train hit confirms, and his kick and pull low sweep, which was technically more unsafe than in later games at a whopping minus 15 on clean block, but had outrageous pushback. His inability to punish minus 10 with any degree of power or reliability did hurt him against some characters, though. Many moves were introduced in Tekken 5 which would become cornerstones of Brian's game, including his jet upper, which initially clocked in at 13 frames. Given that his taunt was plus 17, this made taunt jet upper the easiest that it would ever be, with two whole frames of slot. Beyond this, Brian's chopping elbow launched on normal hit. He was also one of the greatest beneficiaries of the tech roll system. Snake Edge tracked in both directions and had tons of active frames, meaning that he had easy tech catches in both wall situations and open ground, and similarly easy resets if the opponent attempted to back roll away in the open. Other cheap stuff included 3 plus 4 being 16 frames and tracking to his right, 1 2 being a false plus 10 on hit, meaning that 3 plus 4 was largely unavoidable afterwards and making for this mix up here, as well as the last 3 hits of running blind or connecting on counter hit, which was also all guaranteed on the side. He did miss out on some later moves and properties though, including the usable counter hit stuns on his knee strike and high knee kick, as well as both his mid and low soccer kicks. It's Devil Jin. Hmm. 
More than that, it's Devil Jin with a hit confirmable launching mid which tracks to both sides, making it a practical tech roll track. He also had a powerful spike combo with disgusting follow-ups. <laughs> There's nothing particularly close to a real top 5 in 5.0, because there are so many vile characters with wildly disparate strengths. A better way of thinking of it is Steve, then a large group of very cheap characters who are nonetheless not as cheap as Steve. Law had launching count hit Shin Crusher and Dragon Storm, as well as Jailing Shaolin and Spin Kicks to DSS, but struggled in some matchups like against Feng. <laughs> Heihachi had Demon Executioner, which was a safish 10 frame punisher for comical damage. But as Tekken 7 Lee could tell you, having a great 10 frame punish is nice but a little overrated, and Heihachi still wasn't great at beating turtles or fighting Steam. Raven was also very cheap, but a little too unsafe. <laughs> Marduk's plus 6 crouch forcing dunk elbow was ridiculous, but he couldn't effectively compete with the poking dominance of the top tiers. Roger had one of the most comedically lethal counter jab strings in the history of Tekken, and a devastating low sweep, but he wasn't particularly well rounded. <laughs> Feng is undoubtedly the most controversial omission from the top 5, so he gets a spotlight here. He had numerous outrageous moves, including no trip stagger on his sweep kick, making it minus 14 to minus 11 on block depending on distance, a safe 8 frame iron palm, and ridiculous Okizeme. But had the same old Feng problem with covering distance, which has always stopped him from dominating. In general, Feng's a character who's been rated very highly in some games, such as 5.0 and Dark Resurrection and as a relative mid-tier in others such as 6.0 and Bloodline Rebellion. But his actual top level and tournament success has been relatively consistently defined. He does well in the early competitive life of the game due to his strong defensive options, which allow him to escape unfamiliar pressure, but falls off as neutral defense and timing are exploited more heavily. It also speaks to the point mentioned in the Tekken 4 video about powerful defensive options being less useful than having dominating moves in neutral that cover wide swathes of ground in front of the character. Feng's also a character who's been built on quite a bit in successive games, so several key moves were lacking in this iteration, including evading palm strike, climbing dragon, tiger's claw, and most of his Kempo stuff. <laughs> Kuma and Lei had almost nothing to make their case against the grotesquely powerful characters at the top, and in many cases had dire matchup problems. For example, Kuma's large hitbox meant that Law's punch parry allowed him consistent launches, which would be gone in the next game. Imagine being able to do launch damage off a parry, said the Namco team. Stop it, Law! You're not allowed that! No! Tekken 5.0 is a hilarious mess of a game. It's probably the first real Tekken which took steps towards being balanced. Indeed, one of the more fun experiences of the early going was in realizing how many good, practical moves had been rained down on almost the entire cast, where this had previously been confined to a few developer favorites. Characters like Horang were improved out of sight from their previous iterations. They were still, as it turned out, largely outclassed by the actually good characters in the game. It's illuminating to look back at these old games and think about how people genuinely thought that Horang, for example, was a potential candidate for top tier, or even upper mid tier, when the game first came out when this is transparently not true in retrospect, and really reveals just how unbalanced prior games are. However, it should also serve to provide people with a sense of just how lucky they are to be playing in the modern environment, where you can pick whoever you like and be sure that your character can compete. Just a year later, 
many of the more egregious balancing issues in Tekken 5 would be addressed through an update called Dark Resurrection, which together with Tag 1 is perhaps the most fondly remembered competitive Tekken. As ever, thank you so much for watching, and a massive shout out to our patrons for making these videos possible. This time, special thanks to Carlos de Mera, Bradley Williams, Midone, and Dread. Have a wonderful day everyone, and I'll catch you next time.